Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzu. Joining me today is Silver Quill. MBS Show Assemble! Yay! Yay! I, I got nothing smart that we didn't say. Anywho, so, like, Silver Quill's here, and it's me again. Uh, in all honesty, we had something else planned for today, but since Sappy and Tara are not able to join us, we decided to do something fun. Yes, we were supposed to do something torturous, but nah, since they're gone, we got to do fun things, right? That's right. We're, 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 they're not ducking out of this. They, they don't get a free pass. Yeah, it's true. So as punishment day, we'll review Ladybug. <laughs> oh yes, they will. <laughs> they will. Indeed. So anywho, so for this week, we are going to review, or we're going to discuss Avengers Endgame. And it's nothing too focused. We're just going to shoot from the hip and see what we like and dislike. And, you know, nerd out. That's what we internet reviewers do, right? Nerd out. Us nerd out? Here's the thoughts. Oh, we're quite dignified. (laughs) (laughs) But by the time that this review comes out, it will be, as the hip and cool people say, old news. Because a lot of other movies came out beforehand. Like... Uh, by the time this review comes out, Detective Pikachu is out for three, two weeks now. John Wick 3 is out and a lot of other movies in between. So yeah, we're, we're kind of the slow pokes. Mm. Hey. We're fast approaching Godzilla. Oh man, did you hear the trailer, the music that he used? What was it? Um, what word did he use? Oh, man, remember the music? I mostly just remember of uh, sweeping instrumental. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was it again? I forgot. Mm, I'm not sure. Wizard of Oz. I was about to say, did they... I don't think so. Uh, it, was, it was a really fun song. Like I, I, I really. It's like, it made me really want to go watch that movie. Well, watch Wizard of Oz or watch Godzilla. Godzilla and also Men in Black International. Uh, that one, I'm not so sure on. See, uh, if you're not going to, I am and. Here's the thing. Uh, if it's good, then hey, I watch a good movie. If it's bad, I have something to complain about at the end of the year. Ah, the internet mentality at its fullest. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so, anywho, um, Avengers Endgame. It is a popular movie, I, I've been told. It's breaking... You think? <laughs> it's breaking blockbuster uh, earnings. Uh, if I remember right, the beat down Star Wars: The First Jedi. What was that? I forgot. It's a Star uh, Wars movie. What, the 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 Last Jedi. Something like that. I remember, but it it beat that one out. It beat um, Titanic, and James Cameron was humble about the beating, and I think it's on its way to beat Avatar. So yeah, there is a lot like this. This movie is popular and. Uh, beforehand, there were spoilers for it. Like, um, 30 minutes of the movie was leaked, if I remember right. If it was, that's one time I managed to avoid leaks. Thank goodness. Although, there's a there's a strength and a, and a weakness to this popularity. I had to see this movie twice just to get it in enjoyment. The first time, I was next to a person who had a, a physical and verbal uh, and verbal tick. Oh, no. They kept going, gook, gook. For three hours, I felt bad be- that I was getting so frustrated because it's not something they can control. They could control not pulling out their smartphone and checking the time. What? Did that he- was annoying. He did that. She did. Oh yep. God! You know it so, was a three-hour uh, movie. Why were you checking the time? It's so funny. Uh, I saw it again just this past week with my father, who loved it. All right. Uh, and we were in the theater. Because it was the middle of the day, there were only like six people in the theater total. Total opposite from uh, the jammed house at uh, the, the opening weekend. Did you watch it at the Alamo? The first time I did. The second time was at a more subdued AMC. Ah, uh, all right. Or Regal Theaters. Not that it matters. It's not Alamo, and therefore it sucks. <laughs> so, you know what? Since we're talking about movie viewing experience and you shared yours, I, I think I shared mine. Because, here's the thing, um, yes. I was supposed to watch it on the Wednesday. Um, it came on a Wednesday, right? 
technically on a Thursday, but everyone pretty soon they're just going to start leaking the movies an, a week in advance just so they can get that many uh, more viewings. Mm, probably. I, I, this is could be country because Malaysia or Southeast Asia in general usually get the movies early and stuff. Eh, whatever, whatever. So um, watch it on a Wednesday. And here's the thing. I thought that this movie was going to be like any other movie viewing experience. Um, check it out with my friend. Uh, ask him, yo, um, want to go watch Avengers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but did you know that people are already booking the tickets in advance? Like, weeks in advance. And like, oh, re- really now? Okay, um, I'll call you back. I'll try and see what I can do about the tickets. So I key in my local cinema, which is Golden Screen Cinema. And the only reason why I'm just giving them a shout out is because they have the, uh, what you call this, disabled privilege. So yay on me. So anyway, um, go check it out. Sittings were f- full, like, oh god, no. And this was, what, 8pm and stuff? Like, oh no, <laughs> so full, so full. So, ah, that's too bad. You know what, maybe I'll just, we, we can try another day, we can try another day. And Shazam was coming out, and told my friend, hey, you want to check out Shazam? And he says, ah, sure, why not? Book a ticket for Shazam. Went to go watch Shazam. While there, I told my friend, you know what? Why not just mess around with the uh, self-service check-in ticket thingy? You know, those touch screen where you can book your tickets and whatnot. So, we did. And we and I checked in the movie for a late showing because my friend was working on a Wednesday. And he finished work at 5 or 6 so we can plan something around 8. And he told me that, hey, um, why not we check out at 2 p.m.? And I say, wait, 2 p.m.? Are you serious? Like, are you going to take a holiday or something like that? And he'll just, and he, and he just says, I'll just apply for one. I, I'll just switch with another friend or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it work. So we did. And 2 p.m. or 2 something p.m., um, standard seatings were almost full. And we decided to go for the premium seating. And premium seating was available. We scooped center row, uh, back row C. Oh, sorry, um, row C, center. And we, we booked it. Like, yeah, best seat in the house. Yeah, pay for it and whatnot. Yeah, we, we booked our tickets three weeks in advance. Yeah. Then come movie day, my friend told me that I can't join, sorry, I can't watch the movie because my leave was not approved. Uh, so, I said like, what? no, that's, that's, that's bad. Well, we we're supposed to watch this together, man. And he says like, I can't, can't be helped, man, I can't be helped. So, I watched the movie by myself <laughs> in a premium seating situation. And, oh my, was it best. And, oh wow, I, I got no idea how the Alamo is, but premium seating at Golden Screen Cinema is awesome because they have automatic um, retractable um, leg, leg thingies, like the Lazy Boys. So it reclines? Yes, thank you. That's the word, reclines. And each seat are like one of those Lazy Boy seats with a divider in the middle where you can raise up and put it down if you have a couple you want to couple stuff you know do couple stuff you know whatever and at the side there's a small table for your food and whatnot and you're not and you have this one what you call this row for people to walk and not bother you so the experience of watching premium has spoiled me so <laughs> i haven't been i i haven't been talking about the um, movie. I'm just talking about the experience going there, right? Like, my God. And since I was watching it alone, like, hmm, much must pace me like. <laughs> <laughs> Movies are an experience. Yep. And to contrast that to a later viewing, uh, last Wednesday or last Thursday, I watched Detective Pikachu. Um, standard seating. And uh, I, I regret it. I, I wish I have premium seating. Because the jerk 
to my left, shook his leg and vibrate my seat. The jerk on the right check his sorry, didn't check his phone. His phone rang. The mother. So yeah. Oh. So yeah. But since I have the ability to block things out, not that spoiled, me. <laughs> so so yeah. I I'm guessing for me, uh, my experience of watching Endgame was heightened. But no, let let's get into Endgame. So if you have not watched the movie. Stop here and go watch it, I guess. If you haven't seen the movie, why not? Indeed. Endgame starts where Infinity War left off. And that's with the world being 50% off after five years. Oh, well, not, not right away. Not right away. First, it's only, first it's only been about 23 days, <clears throat> oh. not even a month. Oh, yes. 23 days I after mean, the snap. I, that's right. The 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 cosmo effect known as oh snap. <laughs> yeah. One is like where in the universe is Captain Marvel, <laughs> which is what you could say for the whole bloody movie. <laughs> true that. True that. And the thing is, um, we get to see what Iron Man bonding with Nebula, and that's kind of cool. It's kind of surreal. I mean, she's she's so sincere in wanting to learn this game. I wish to try again. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. This is the same nebula tried to kill Gamora, right? Yeah, yeah. And and once once like um she got the concept of the game and won, her face lit up like, "What? I won? Good job, me?" <laughs> I'm I'm finally receiving praise. It's like, "Ah, ah nebula." <laughs> oh, I just want to give her a hug even though she'd probably shiv me. No, man, like, she's, she's, they're all battered and defeated. Like, you, you can clearly tell that Tony Stark is giving up because um, food's almost out, life support on the ship is almost out, and um, when eating some jerky, I was thinking, um, Tony offered it to Nebula, and Nebula says, nah, I, I don't need it. So, like, you can clearly tell that they're bonding in a way. Yeah, and that scene where she, she sort of tucks him into the pilot seat just to, I don't know, ride, it, ride out whatever happens next. Yeah. Don't know where she goes. Given her enhancements, I'm betting she can actually live without oxygen for a time. Probably. I, I don't know. But still, um, from this little uh, banter or little interaction with Tony here, we can see that she's growing and that says a lot and then captain marvel becomes deus ex marvel yeah true because that. it in all of space in all the cosmos either she's the only one to pick up a distress signal i don't know or she just finds them i would call that a needle in a haystack but it's more like a grain of sand on the beach but here's the thing it's did they? Okay, you have to assume that they did activate their distress beacon. Uh, one can hope. So yeah, one, one would assume so. Because if not, there is a huge plot hole. But that's besides the point. Captain Marvel comes in and saves Tony and Nebula. And once they reach Earth and land, uh, we, we get to see the survivors or the Avengers of Earth um, be shocked at the arrival. Um, before that, uh, if you have not watched Captain Marvel, at the end of the credits, we get to see her pop in asking for uh, Nick Fury. And I'm guessing there's a huge explanation of what happened and that's why she went off to space. Well, she went to space to, to first see this the scroll to their new home. I don't care if I'm spoiling Captain Marvel. It was... It's not even in theaters anymore. Come on, people. Mm -hmm. Cut me some slack. Yeah. But but basically, this movie contradicts that end scene, which, as I understand it, they they had alternate scenes in mind depending on how well Captain Marvel was received. Oh. I'm not sure which one they went with because <laughs> I actually had to remind myself during the climax. It's like, wait, I feel like I'm forgetting someone. 
Oh, wait, Captain Marvel's not here. Where where did she, they say she was? She's been gone for the whole blessed movie. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. Like, Captain Marvel for the movie itself is kind of strange. Like, they mentioned her to be the end-all, be-all. Like, she's going to be the one that kicks Thanos' ass. But she only came in just to destroy a ship and whatnot. And to prevent the snap. Second snap. Actually, this whole thing, Tony adrift in space, uh, the Avengers just sort of sitting and not sure what to do. Mm -hmm. It it reminds me, this goes all the way back to the first Avengers movie where Iron Man admits, yeah, we take a little while to get our feet together, but we get there. And man, when he finally makes it to Earth and is just unloading on everyone, you know, I said this was coming. I I had this vision. But oh no, because I trampled civil civil liberties. It's like, dude, you created a killer robot. My bad, but still. <laughs> we're not going to leave this at my bad. I'm going to say I still think the Sarkovia Accords were a bad decision. While I understood the mentality, I, I was not unsympathetic, I stayed on Captain America's view. Mostly because I think Captain America is awesome. True, true. But still, um, yeah, t- t- Tony comes back and like, he just said, and then like, okay, you know what? I'm giving up. I-, I-, I just want to live a peaceful life. Five years later, peaceful life. But before that, well, um, sorry, uh, sorry, go ahead. Well, for a minute, I thought you were going to skip the most disappointing rematch of all time. And what that is? I mean, it's like that they're, well, they're flying, they're flying to the planet and like, oh. wait, they're already going to confront him? I mean, I thought for sure this would be a, uh, Towards the end, oh nope, Th- Thanos! Ah, Thanos! <laughs> like they, 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 ah. they, mm. because of what um they analyzed showing that what um twenty five days you mentioned twenty five, twenty six, whatever. Let's say let's say uh, month tw- twenty three, twenty three. Yeah, yeah. twenty three days later, there's another snap, and uh, a new planet was appeared and stuff and blah blah blah, and well. It, it's more that there was another energy wave, which meant the stones were used. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they found they found the planet. Though this really hints at the hypocrisy of uh, Thanos. He talks about perfect chance, but given his plan and the fact that basically he couldn't allow himself to be snapped out of existence, otherwise they just pick up the gauntlet and fix it themselves. He was never at risk. From his own purge. But was he excluded from the purge? Yes. Hmm. That ain't fair. Exactly. And he his entire point is that this is supposed to be fair. You know, dude, it's it's completely random. I have no I, I have no control over it. Well, apparently you do because you protected yourself. So what does it say when you're not will when you're not willing to face the consequence of the rest of the universe? True that, true that. But still, we we get to see our heroes blast off to space and take him down. And the way that they do so is kind of badass. Well, I do. I love Rocket. Who here has never been to space? Half the room is. <laughs> right, don't, don't throw up in my ship, oh Rocket. Oh, but but Rocket, like I have to say something. Like uh, when um, Tony arrived first arrived on Earth. And Nebula's there, like, oh, Rocket just gives Nebula a hug, like, oh, that's so sweet, somehow. Well, they're, they're all they have left. But anywho, after taking Thanos down, like, let's just say that Thor didn't miss. <laughs> Not this time. Yep. I went for the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When those three little words appear on screen, that was heartbreaking. Actually, it's kind of weird. Uh, friends and I, in anticipation of Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters, we watched Godzilla mm-hmm. last night. And there's that scene 15 years later. Oh. And I looked at that thought, and I thought, you know, I had not invest enough in these characters that 15 years later hurts nearly as much as five years later. <laughs> You're like, that. I was like, ah! They had to go five years without Peter Parker? Or anybody else? I mean, like, Half of the universe is gone still. I know. 
And that's that's why I think it's rather genius that they had Tony Stark become a family man. Yeah. I mean, one, one to show him claw his way out of a terrible ordeal, but also it sets a new conflict. You can't just revert. Life has moved on. People have built something. You can't take that away or else you're just doing what Thanos did. True that, true that. And that's what Tony asked for. Um, just bring everybody back that was uh, snap away, but um, leave everything that's been established, like his family and whatnot. Let's just move on to certain scenes. Like um, Captain America now is holding a mm, counseling center. Support yes, thank you. Group? Support group. Yes, he's holding a support group. Uh, Bruce Banner's there. Uh, some random citizens and if I do remember right there's a trivia about one of the random citizens there oh god I wish I remember what was it Banner because he's Hulk now. no 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 this was before like, like during the support group yeah but what? that was that Banner because oh, I don't think it was Banner I think so it was Banner but what I think it was before no 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 yeah that was like um 23 days after the snap where um Brenner was talking about, oh, I was uh, meeting with someone and we kind of talk about it. I'm going to meet him again, blah, 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 blah. Then, like, after five years, something else happened. Well, I'm sure people will correct us in the comments section. I got confused because he said he was meeting with a guy. Yeah, that's a Hulk. Unless I check. Wait, he met with the Hulk? What? So, Brenner, like, the Hulk is scared. The Hulk is scared and fragile. Brenner there is trying to do something and that something is well raided himself to bring out the Hulk yet bring out his genius or his mind or keep his mind there so you get smart Hulk okay well let's people will will correct us in the comments let us move ever yeah. forward so I do appreciate that Captain America is filling in basically for yeah, Sam yeah and and yeah um, after five years five years later we get to see where Ant-Man's been <laughs> Man, I feel bad for him. Just that scene of him walking down the this street that looks like it's been turned into a war zone. Yeah, and he's just asking, like, what happened? And knowing that and the, it, people were gone in there's a memorial and looking at the stones, whatever it is, and just looking at for his daughter's name. And instead of seeing his daughter's name, he see his own name. He rushes back home and discovers that Damn, my daughter grew up. And he doesn't he doesn't greet her with hey peanut, which I good and bad. Good that you're acknowledging that she's grown and you probably can't use old kitty names. Bad in that it really drives home that there's now a, a border between them, a sense of loss. But I don't think so. I mean the hey peanut thing is priceless. Like if you're a dad, you're going to call your kid those cutesy wootsy names, no matter what. Even if it uh, embarrass them and it's a father's job to embarrass their child but then we have that that scene that's been teased of him outside the avengers <laughs> compound hello yeah. oh, i love that one I love that scene so he, he goes to avengers i won't say avengers tower avengers compound where we get to see natalia natalia right natasha, natasha. So we get to see natasha being in well being in charge uh being the quote-unquote coordinator, coordinator for the Avengers, we get to see Rocket and Nebula. No Nebula, right? Just Rocket? Oh, no. Nebula's uh, there, too. We get too. to see Rocket and Nebula on a mission in space. We get to see um, Black Panther's aide. Uh, what's the name? I forgot. Oh, the yeah. general. You know, just, just going to skip a few things, blah, 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 blah. Um, she's just coordinating stuff. And funny enough, in... Wakanda, there seems to be an earthquake in the ocean and whatnot. And Nebula, sorry, um, and Natasha is just saying, oh, did you check it out and whatnot? And the general just says, is the earth shaking? It's just a normal earthquake. Like, we don't do nothing. So, uh, fun, yeah, just let it fun be. Fact. But... Sorry, mm -hmm. Fun fact. Fun uh, fact. This might be a, what you gonna call this, um, hint of the next villain for Black Panther, which is Namor, the Submarinarian. The Submarinarian? 
The Submariner. Uh, the, submariner. <laughs> the Submariner, yes. It could be him. Yes. Causing an earthquake. Oh, good. So, uh, we'll see. If it's true, they're a genius. By the way, the reason why they can't use him soonish is because he's part of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Oh. And does that mean Fox doesn't want to let no, him go? No, done. They got him back. Oh, well, there you go. Have you seen the tweet that um, Disney pulled out? Like, hey, guys, check out X-Men Dark Phoenix or something like that. <laughs> no, I've, I've managed to avoid that. Dark Phoenix is its own kettle of fish. But, but anyway, we get to see Steve Rogers comes in sharing a sandwich with Natasha and stuff. And we get to see the infamous trailer. Which prompted the uh, How It Should Have Ended trailer, where all the leftover heroes were gathering up. It's just like, okay, how many more franchises are you going to get? <laughs> Why are you here? Because I'm Batman. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho. Uh, but anywho. Um, Scott Lang describes his moment in the nanoverse, microverse, whatever it is. And described that he was stuck there. Sorry, for the outside world, it was five years. For him, it was five hours. So... Um, they you probably really had to use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So they described that, oh, maybe uh, we can do time traveling and stuff. And uh, they say, who is smart enough to do this? Tony Stark. They visit him and he says no. No, I have a daughter. And again, this great conflict of I, you can't give up what some people do move forward. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's that whole, but not us. I guess that's the thing. Uh, some of the some of these heroes, like the general uh, and others, they're doing their best to move on. But I guess there's something positive and negative to that stubbornness. You can't move on, which means that, well, as we see, a great many of them are self destructing. True. And yet, and yet, it is that refusal that enables them to undo what was done oh, talking about self-destruct um we opened the movie with uh, clint uh playing with or hanging out with his family and they all vanish yeah wow he got really unlucky yeah he he got the unlucky stick in that situation and now he's out on a rampage killing everyone or killing all the bad guys well yeah so it these are the guys who didn't have the decency to go and he's it, he's just taking out that anger. It's like, my loving, innocent family is gone, and you guys are still here? Oh, no, 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 no. Time for me to play the Punisher. <laughs> or, in this case, Ronan. Where is the Punisher, by the way? Oh, God. He probably got snapped. <laughs> no, man. Oh, boys. But anywho, yes, um, getting back on track. While everybody goes back home, Tony Stark discovers time traveling. Oh, God. And he teaches his daughter a new word, which is great. <laughs> and the latest catchphrase and trend, I love you 3,000. <laughs> 3,000, wow. Now go to bed or I'll sell your choice. <laughs> but I bet Vegeta doesn't agree with that. I don't get my boy toys. I just blow them up. Uh, I love you over 9,000. <laughs> probably, shouldn't, probably shouldn't say boy toys. <laughs> I know, in Vegeta, whatever. That's a, that's something for like, an abridged series. <laughs> Indeed. But anywho, <laughs> anyway. uh, since they couldn't get Tony, they decided to go to the next best person, and that's David Banner, which is... Sorry, I call him David. Is it Bruce or David? Bruce. Bruce. Da- David is the TV series. Yeah. So anyway, they visit Bruce Banner, and he's Smart Hulk, and he's kind of popular with the kids. Popular, well, yeah, Jolly Green Giant right there. Yeah, true that. A big, huge change from the menace he was. Hulk smash. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm glad we don't. I'm glad we don't abandon the angry Hulk because he he could be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Especially, well, getting a little ahead of myself, but I now know that Hulk would never be Silverstream's favorite character mm-hmm. because he doesn't appreciate stares. <laughs> No stairs. Oh, that's a lot of fun. But um, anyway, uh, we get to see who now. Um, 
uh, David, uh, Bruce Banner go back to the compound and try to do this time machine thing. And it fails three times. We get uh, Kid Scott, Baby Scott, uh, Grandpa Scott, and Normal Scott. And all over the time, let's just say it's a funny scene. You have to watch it yourself. Tony, it is hilarious. Tony comes in and says, uh, you tried it, right? And Scott turning to a baby? Yep. <laughs> I love the reconciliation with Captain America and Iron Man. I mean, he, I mean, Tony is so practical about it. Found resentment. It's too tiring, very toxic. I don't like it. <laughs> Me neither. So he gives him his shield back. It's like, that's bromance hey, man. right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anywho, um, Tony goes in, tries it out, and it works. Um, they tried it with um, Clint, Hawkeye, and Hawkeye goes back to the past, yep. sees family, takes something back from the past, go back to the future, and it works. Now we have a plan. The planning scene is awesome. Mostly because it's so human. I mean, they're just, they're all eating. They're going through hours of and hours of Plan- thoughts. Planning and stuff. Having little tangents. I love where Nat is asking, what what was Doctor Strange a doctor of? <laughs> you, you have to remember, like, sometimes uh, the actors here, they could have just go on a tangent or just um, wing it. Uh, what was the one I'm looking for? Um, what What is... The thing that the actors do when they don't follow the script. Improv? Yes, thank you. They they, they might be improving those some of those scenes. So that could be cool if it was true. Either way, it's just the, these great scenes of where they're all like having Chinese food or Hulk, Hulk is probably trying out his Ben and Jerry's version. <laughs> yeah. So so um, they talk about it like, okay, um, where was... Uh, wait, no, before that, they have to go pick up Thor, right? Well, the, once they know what... The, no, they had to do that before they did the planning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because Thor... Okay, let's just say that the, because of this movie, I'm no longer intimidated by Chris Hemsworth. I'm sure <laughs> that'll change by the next movie he's in. Mm-hmm. But still, I just like... You could see the, the love handles... And it's like, oh, no, they wouldn't. And I kid you not, the the women in the first viewing <laughs> is pa- packed out with you. Like, you could just feel the way. But, no! <laughs> no! It was totally opposite for us. Like, my theater, when we saw, Ho- no, when we saw Thor, we were like, oh, no! <laughs> I don't want to do! <laughs> we were giggling. <clears throat> so, yeah. I mean, let's let's have a little competition here. Which Avenger has it worst of all? <laughs> Clint. Okay, that's a top contender to be sure. He lost the most. Mm-hmm. Tony, Tony though he lost Spider Man and I think Happy, but he he still had uh, Pepper, and you know they married and had a child. That's great. Uh, Steve unfortunately had very few connections. He but he did lo- lose his two best friends. Mm-hmm. Rocket, Rocket, Rocket lost his family, the only family he ever knew. So that puts him on the same footing as Clint. Um, Natasha, Natasha too. Well, Natasha didn't have anyone; she had the Avengers. But Thor is carrying the feeling that he could have stopped this oh, if he aimed for the head. Yeah, like that post-traumatic disorder. Like I read somewhere that he has that. Here's the thing. Whether or not he has full PTSD is not the real concern. Can you use Thor's presentation to help people better understand what PTSD means? There's a real challenge. Mm -hmm. And how did they do it? Like, did they succeed or did they fail? You know, well, I don't know enough about PTSD to say whether or not they succeeded or failed. I do know that they really had him... uh, they really gave him an arc. You know, he got revenge. He took the guy down. And guess what? It didn't magically fix everything. If, if anything, it made it worse. Because while he's trying to cling to that success, his life falls apart. He falls apart. Yeah. And it's only when he gets to talk to his mom in what has to be the most expensive therapy session <laughs> ever. Indeed. Both, both he and Tony. You know, we had to invent time travel to get some emotional closure. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, and uh, the thing is, um, 
Thor, I think we're skirting around the issue here, but we get to see Thor being a depressed alcoholic. And his friend, um, Skeet and Meek, and who's the rock guy? I forgot his name. Oh, well. I, for, I forget too, but I'm glad they're still alive. Yep, they're, they're still alive, and they're trying to support him, but they're, they're doing it in the wrong way. And before we carry on, Silver, how was your character when they played Fortnite? <laughs> I don't think many people reacted as much. Really, no. I, I, I would be surprised if someone cried out, You should be playing Apex Legends! Oh, man. Now, re- remember, okay, um, this is kind of way back when, but way back, way back when in the days, um, it, Fortnite had uh, a deal with Marvel where they inserted Thanos in there. And you can see Tennis doing the floss. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. So anyway, um, so I think that's the deal that they had. So yeah, I guess. But anyway, yeah, we get to see Krog, whatever the rock guy name is, playing a playing, uh, Fortnite and screaming at Noob uh, Master sixty nine, <laughs> and uh, hit cannon here. I think Noob Master sixty nine could be Loki. <laughs> That's the only way he gets to talk to his brother. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, so Hulk kind of convinced Thor to get back to uh, civilization and plan this time heist. Actually, I think Rocket did just by offering him beer. Yep. There's beer on the ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the immortal line, you look like melted ice cream. <laughs> Uh, what was that referring to? Thor's guts. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Uh I I'm actually while we're doing this I'm doing a search for Thor and PTSD just to see get anything. Uh Oh yeah, Vanity Fairs talks about mm. it, the medium.com, <clears throat> uh polygon.com, they have a they right away they uh they seem to say this is problematic. I think people are going to have very strong opinions on how Thor was depicted. Case it, uh, to draw a strange parallel, the Predator mm-hmm. came out, and it was awful. Wait, are you talking about the game and or the movie? The movie, the most recent ah, movie. Right. And it was awful because while they were trying so hard to say, oh, look, we have this boy with autism, but we're treating him as the greatest warrior and this main character and blah, blah, blah. But we're playing off guys with emotional issues, PTSD, and other traumas for jokes. <laughs> I see what you mean. And and I was just like, you know what? No, you, you don't get a pass, and you sure as heck don't get to signal your virtue mm-hmm. uh, but by, by treating this kid as some sort of magician. I will be interested to see how people discuss Thor and showing the effects of depression. It had a lot of jokes. Uh, do you know what's running through my veins? Cheese whiz. <laughs> uh, Lightning. I won't deny that seeing this transformation is hilarious. But at the same time, there's a lot of genuine pain there. And you almost feel guilty for laughing. True. But it's, okay, for whatever is done is for comedic effect. But in reality or in that universe, it's sad. It's really sad to see Thor let himself go. And the thing is... Thor has an arc, uh, a few movies worth of arc, and by movie three, uh, Ragnarok, we can see that they're they're leaving the uh, more serious tone for a more jokey one because it seems that what the people want a more jokey version of Thor. Well, yeah, but that was what made him so endearing. A lot of people didn't love Thor until Ragnarok. Yeah, that, that's the thing. That, that, that's what I mean. Where jokey Thor is what people want. They they want the guy screaming yes when he sees the Hulk. So people love that. And people, I more prefer Loki screaming. <laughs> See, brother, that's how it feels. <laughs> no, but still, you can clearly tell that the tone has shifted. So now, uh, when it comes to Avengers. Thor now has to be depicted that way, unfortunately. I don't know if have to. I mean, he was pretty darn serious for the first half. 
Yeah, I mean, but the thing is... Well, no, the, the first part up until the rematch. Yeah, but you mean for Endgame or Infinity War? Uh, Endgame. Yeah. Infinity War, he was back to being pretty... He was he was darker. But then again, he just witnessed a, a, my, a horror in its own right, which was just a prelude to an even greater horror. True that, true that. But no, um, for the very beginning, that's brooding. He's still... Um, brooding for the loss of the universe and he's blaming himself for it and knowing that there's a chance for revenge he's gonna take it but you mentioned before uh, revenge doesn't mean anything like people say an eye for an eye doesn't mean whatever yeah but anyway um, getting back on track they discuss on where each infinity stone were in time and um Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch, or Scarlet, Scarlet Witch? No, no, Scarlet Witch. The other one, um, uh, Natasha. Uh, Natasha just mentioned, hey, did it? We had three Infinity Stones in New York at one time. If you keep, if you time it just right and keep a low profile, which means Hulk, we need you to smash some things. <laughs> ah, right, rar. <laughs> ah. oh, this is. Uh, this is um, what, 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 I forgot, but it was so much fun. So anyway, um, they discover where the stones are and they split. They go through time and stuff. And let's go for the most entertaining one, Hulk. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk was there. Um, he sees himself bashing and stuff and like, oh, was I like that before? Ooh. <laughs> well, I, did, I, I just love uh, how disappointed he is. Like, yeah, fine, I'll go smash some stuff. He's so indignant. <laughs> like, oh, uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. like, uh, like he threw the bike away. Like, Neh. <laughs> so much fun. And when she, when he went to the Sorcerer Supreme, um, it was kind of interesting. And the, the the conversation that they had was like, um, I'm here to see Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're five years too early. <laughs> that that conversation there was awesome. And um, Bruce had to explain why he needed the time stone, and the Sorcerer Supreme said, "Nah, I can't. I was, I'm supposed to guard this stone with my life and whatnot." And well, that didn't work the way you thought. <laughs> true that, true that. But no, uh, here's here's what I heard when they were talking about how the time stream happened, and if you remove something out of time, you create a uh, branch and stuff. Uh, I heard that for, for that um, visual imagery or visual explanation, someone suggested that because they say that wouldn't that be confusing if you don't have a visual reference? And here's the thing. Uh, if I do remember right, the Russo's brothers mentioned that everybody who's working on this project, if you have an idea, bring it up to us and We'll see uh, if it works or not. And this was one of them. <clears throat> Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because if there's no visual explanation, could you understand it? I could, but I've had a lot of uh, a lot of experience with time travel stories. Actually, it's kind of funny what that that scene where War Machine and <laughs> Ant Man is like. But Back to the Future wouldn't lie to us, <laughs> would it? <laughs> oh my god! There's a lot of things where. Oh man. Okay, here's here's a funny story. Um before going watching the Avengers, I've been watching let's play of Mortal Kombat 11 story. And Mortal Kombat 11 story has something to do with time traveling. Something he says. <laughs> Quite a bit in fact. Yeah. So th- the way that time traveling works in Mortal Kombat is if you kill your past self, your future self dies. Spoilers for what's going to happen later. Even though <laughs> Yeah, the Mortal Kombat's time travel makes very, is very confusing. But it makes sense, because you don't want to kill your previous self. Whatever. Either way. There's also just the... Who here wants to salute America's ass? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're just keeping away. So uh, we get to see Captain America uh, sneaking into Stark Towers after uh, defeating Loki and stuff. And uh, we get to see Tony uh, dress up as a uh, military guy, uh, a SWAT member, to try and get stuff. So, uh, it seems that 
Captain America's job was fun and easy because he had to go into a lift. And mind you, everybody in the lift was the same character from uh, Civil War. Winter Soldier. Sorry, yes, Winter Soldier. And they they even are doing it beat for beat. And I got to applaud. They found a way to get Captain America to say Hail Hydra that doesn't uh, that doesn't anger the entire community. Yep, yep. But no, okay, when he said that, how, how what did your theater uh, go into a roar? I don't know about a roar, but they did feel like, oh my god, I can't believe you said it. Oh, my dude is like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and like, oh, that won't, like, you can see beat for beat, they're getting ready, like, oh, no, I got to call the director. He leans in and says, hail Hydra. And so, like, the guy, the guy's expression is like, oh. <laughs> no way, you too. <laughs> Oh my god, he got it so easy. Oh man. Well, but then he gets uh def- why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's because um Loki um freed himself uh, after um Tony gave himself a heart attack. Oh, it's a minor cardiac impulse. Yeah. It doesn't sound minor. <laughs> yeah, and he he could have gotten away if the Hulk used the lift, but no, he had to use the stairs. <laughs> Hulk hates stairs. And Silver Stream again is like, what? Angry hippogriff noises. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, with that, the Tesseract flew away to Loki. Loki got himself free and ported out. Oh, no. Well, we've, we've set it up so he can come back in the series. He's Loki will never truly die. But you have to think about, Ex- like, does it really happen that way? Multiverse theory, all branching timelines, all manner of things. Yeah, but they did mention in the chat with the Sorcerer Supreme where if you put it back before, it'll go back to normal. Well, I'm assuming that Captain America would undo the the branch as well. That they'd say, Cap, we need to fix that screw up. Mm-hmm. And somehow, I can't imagine how he did. Maybe he maybe he delayed Hulk on the stairs. But no, see, here's the thing: where this version of time traveling don't make sense that much. How does everything work? Oh, maybe he just knocked out Loki. I'm not sure. I'm sure we'll have plenty of Marvel movies to to explore this paradox. Yeah. But anyway, that's besides the point, and let's carry on. Um, New York is done. We got all three, except for the Tesseract because that one left with Loki. And Tony and Steve decide, hey, um, let's go back to the 60s, 40s? What year was it? I forget the exact year, but it was after Captain America had been lost. But I did love that they, uh, like I say, it's a very expensive therapy session. Yeah. So they went back to the past to grab the Tessera and some pin particles and... Steve got to see his love, Peggy, and Tony got to talk with his dad, and they bonded. So, if I'm rushing because I am stuffed because we're almost an hour in and still near the, well, wherever it is. So, we go to Rocket and Thor, and like you mentioned before, uh, it's an expensive therapy session. So, um, the Power Stone, was it? Let's see, which one was that? Reality Stone. Okay, the Reality Stone is inside Natalie Portsman's body. All right. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So, Rocket and Thor were supposed to go in there, get it, and yeah. But no, Thor has to go visit his mom. And uh, Thor's mom knows that he's not from this timeline and says, I'm a witch. I know time traveling. And, oh, that's so cool. Like, that moment of talking there is just, oh, just, just so awesome. Well, and it's, it is a little heartbreaking. I mean, poor Thor. Yeah. It's just like, I'm totally from the future. Yeah. Oh, and but, that, that moment with Thor's mom, like, Thor, Thor had kind of a crummy ride, but getting to meet his mom, getting to pull Mew Mew, is just awesome. Like, He's still worthy, and he's still back in the game. Still back in the game, and 
Although, I gotta say, if anyone's had a crummy run through this whole thing, it's Peter Quill. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> well, everything that's happened to him. But then you go back in time, and the best opening of the Marvel movies, the Guardians of the Galaxy, you wish, I wish my life had a soundtrack like that. Yeah, but. Come and get your love. Yeah, but bing, you get to bing. see from the other side where he's just singing to himself, like, <laughs> And he's an idiot. He's like, yes, he's an idiot, but he's a delightful idiot. Let him just, let him have this, please. And he just got a close line by who now? Is it Gomorrah or War Machine? War Machine. <laughs> who, who's never met Peter Quill, so uh, yeah. I guess it's, it's definitely not personal. Oh, before that, uh, they arrive at the planet with Hawkeye and Natasha. So... Nebula just says, okay, you guys need to go there to get the Soul Stone. All right. Okay, bye-bye. So now... <laughs> Never see you again. So now... Uh, they got the, whatchamacallit, uh, whatever stone Quill was going to get. And they ported out. But before Nebula can port it out, it seems that um, she's connected to the network. Oh, no. She has dial-up. Oh, no. <laughs> So with that, <laughs> so with that, they discover um, the plan. Like uh, Thanos discovers the plan that oh, this is from the future, and they're gonna stop me. No, 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 we're gonna stop them. Ah, time traveling. It is a good way to bring Gamora, Gamora back. Yeah. Although for me, the one of the harder scenes is uh, is Hawkeye and Black Widow. What a complete opposite of, of Thanos and Gamora. Oh yeah. One of the the one of the themes in this uh in both these movies is the love of a father, especially for his daughter. Mm -hmm. Uh which in truth I don't think gets explored a lot. The last time we talked about that was uh the Pokemon movie, mm -hmm. Spell of the Unknown. True, 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 true. Where we learned about the deep terror of man signs. <laughs> yeah. And for that one, uh, sorry, uh, for Thanos and Gamora, it wasn't really, uh, how do I put this? It, it wasn't really there because you don't really feel the fatherly, father daughter love because Gamora don't have love for Thanos while Thanos does love Gamora, but it's just a one. It's a twisted. Yeah. It's a twisted love. Yeah. yeah. He has a twisted morality, he has a twisted view on the universe, mm -hmm. and so it makes sense he had a twisted sense of love. And now but, we have Natasha and Clint. They're, they're not lovers, but they have a bond of friendship, that bond, of, that love of, you know, friendship. They love each other in a platonic way. Are we still friends? It depends on how hard you hit me. <laughs> yep. And... Clint wants... Okay, n n another fun fact. Um, this scene here was also one of the, what you call this, previously I mentioned where um, people were commenting, um, you shouldn't go for Nat you shouldn't go for Clint. Uh, it'll rob him of his uh, arc. You should go for Natasha instead. Uh, well, much like much like Thor's PTSD, this, uh, this scene and its depiction of Widow... It draws a lot of debate. A lot of people are saying that because Black Widow was a very powerful character, she was having her own arc dealing with this. But by making her sacrifice herself, she becomes secondary to Clint's story. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people take issue with that. True. But at the same time, too, you have Clint who was out for revenge, who was a broken man, who had nothing to lose. Lose something precious to him and gain back his family in return. I, I say that's a nice reward for him. Uh, but Natasha, she she makes the sacrifice play. And what I love about the scene is just how hard they fight yeah. to, to, to give themselves up. Yes. I mean... Uh, no, I want to die. I mean, no, you. No, no, me. No, no, not you, me. Exploding arrow, uh, jumping off the cliff with him. I mean, Red Skull's off to the side like, this is the most fun I'm going to ever have. <laughs> and there, there's a joke where I've seen where um, Steve goes back in time, returns everything, and when he goes back to uh, the hill, what is this? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, but anywho, anywho. So, Natasha 
Paul plummets to her death, similar to the way that in Tony's vision. <clears throat> so, oh, where, where everyone's dying. I mean, I, I don't re- quite re- remember. Remember that. in uh, the first Avenger movie, uh, Tony had a vision where everybody's dying or dead and stuff. Oh, that was in the Ultron movie. Yeah, Ultron movie, yeah. Okay, so uh, the way that Natasha or Widows died is similar to how she died in this movie. So, yeah, Easter egg. Well, they, they are thorough, if nothing mm-hmm. else. So, they got all the stones, and they get back, and they create a gauntlet to, uh, what you call this, to do the snap. But before that, Nebula comes back, and she's not future Nebula, she's past Nebula. And she infiltrates the team, and, well, after the snap, Sorry, um, not after the snap. They, they, they talk about who is going to do the snap. And Hulk just mentions that this thing radiates gamma radiation. I'm the most suitable candidate to do this. So, they do so. They snap everybody back to existence. And I guess that thing go back to normal. Yay. You're never so happy as when you see a... Um... When you see Clint's phone light up. Yeah, he, his face was lighting up like, oh my god, joy. Suddenly, death from above. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> just when you think everything's fine, oh, where's my house? Yeah. Oh no. And, and Pass Nebula called in the, what you call this, future. Like, <laughs> this is just dumb. Dumb? Really? The way they do it, the time traveling thing, just, let's just say it's just like, Whoo! Huge, and yeah, they just bombard the compound and stuff. Like, oh god! It's like Iron Man's probably just like, this is why I can't have anything nice. <laughs> Indeed. So, anywho, um, Clint wakes up, finds the gauntlet, and runs from Thanos' army. Um, everybody kind of gets themselves, uh, kind of recruits, and just tries to get back in one piece. Um, you see Thanos just sitting there waiting for the Avengers to come and attack. And you get to see Tony appears, Captain America appears, and Hulk appears. And. Or. Sorry? You mean Thor? Thor, yeah, sorry. Thor, Thor. You get to see them appear and start the battle. And the battle was awesome. Indeed, it was. I mean, this. This battle where. First off, it's that great call from Sam on your left. <laughs> And just everyone comes in. You're just like this, oh my god, I've fanboyed so hard. And through the course of this battle, you see Spider-Man flying on a winged horse with a Valkyrie, battling aliens while carrying a magic space gauntlet. Yeah, but before that too, uh, man, like before that too, you, you get to see like uh, the initial fight, like um, Captain America swinging his shield, uh, Iron Man blasting and stuff, and uh, Thor hitting the hammer and stuff. And suddenly... Um, uh, what I think Thor was about to get the killing blow, and suddenly we see lightning, and who we see Captain America whole Mew Mew. <laughs> and I love Thor's reaction. I do yeah! it, and my tear to everybody scream in joy. Like, ah! How about yours? Yeah. How about yours, my friend? Oh, everyone was loving it. I I was getting caught up in it. I mean, just seeing Cap- I'd argue Captain America had the best fight scene. Because him using his shield and Mjolnir, yeah. he's he's just wailing on Thanos. Yeah, and the way that he's controlling the shield and the hammer, it's insane. Well, it shows what that super soldier serum really does for a guy. Yeah, hyper combo finish. <laughs> uh, but still, but still, uh, Cap's shield's destroyed. Um, and when, see, when, when things are down in the dumps, he stands up. Um, in defiance of Thor, sorry, in defiance of Thanos, and guess who comes in? Doctor Strange opening portals with Wong. There's nothing wrong with that. I know. Uh, and Steven just says, "Is this all of them?" <laughs> Wong, is that everyone? Yeah, is this everyone? And Wong just says, "What? You want more?" <laughs> oh, boys, but still, um, we we get to see everybody comes in like a huge army of badasses. Like, yeah, hey, Silver. Um, I think Wong invited someone in. Oh, look, he threw a Pokeball through a portal. <laughs> what is this place? Where am I? Hey there, man. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Uh, we're, we're okay. Uh, we're 
in a heated discussion about Avengers Endgame. Ooh. The best fight part. Yep. Yep. You got the you got the big you got the armies of like Asgard and uh Wakanda. Yeah. Wakanda oh. forever. I know, Nippon paint. <laughs> I I don't know what they're chanting, but I know it sounded awesome when they did it. Yeah, I I read it. It's African for together or something like that. Kind of wish we could we could do that, although modern war does not allow for such things. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. So anywho, um, we get to see a lot of awesome characters come in. We get to see um the guardians come in and Rocket getting to hug Groot. Yay! We we see Spider Man come in. We see. Um, who else? Uh, Doctor Strange and his group, and there, there is a lot. There is a lot, and the fight happens, and oh god, it's just so amazing. I'm not crying. You're crying. What? I, I'm not crying. I'm fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I was anyway, crying um, tears of joy when I saw this scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there, there's a lot of scenes. So let, let's just break it down slowly. Um, Silver, what is what was your favorite fight? After Captain America versus uh, Thanos while wielding Mjolnir in a shield, mm-hmm. like after Captain says, after the battle, Aven- Avengers assemble. Well, he more hisses it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Cap, you got to speak up. No one's going to hear you. <laughs> yeah. I would say my favorite part of the fight. Oh, it's it's like a buffet. There's so much. I want to try it all. <laughs> I actually was Spider Man activate insta kill mode. It's just like okay, what wow, wow wow trading wheels off indeed. Indeed. But I, I heard people say that oh it cheapens his it cheapens him. Like he's kind of dumbed down because of that. What well, because he's managing to hold on to the most important uh piece of clothing in the universe while fending off alien hordes? I guess. I'm sorry, no. You you're in that fight. You need all the help you can get. I don't care if you're the best fighter in the universe, i.e. Captain America. <laughs> you need backup. Yeah. For for me personally, I like Cap and Thor teaming up as trading Mew Mew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like, oh, no, funny. no, no. No, here, you give me that. You get the small one. <laughs> <laughs> that was so much fun. What about you, Tara? Oh, there is so much I enjoyed about that. Um... I guess my one favorite scene when S- Spider Man's getting surrounded by those things, Cap's like, mm-hmm. "Here, grab this hammer." As he throws it, and they just flies <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fun. That's a good one. Oh, uh, and after that, like, uh, Thanos just says, "Okay, you know what? Screw this. Um, those sh- uh, gunships bombard the ground. We don't care. Um, if it kills my own people, I don't care." Yeah, Thanos is much less uh, sympathetic in this movie. Yeah, it's like he needs to win. No, um, no matter the cause, and it seems to be working. Like Wong and his group of magicians start to pull up a barrier. Did anybody do anything else? Rocket shielded Groot with his own body. That's a that is probably the most selfless display I've ever seen from Rocket. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is the guy who was slapping Thor, saying, "Get, get with the program." <laughs> so, well. Them getting bombarded. Suddenly, they shoot up. And people are just... Everybody's just asking, why are they shooting up? Why? 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 Tara, you want to answer this one? Do I have to? I mean, I'm trying to think of a good introduction for this, though. <laughs> well... Uh, wait, look at that up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's totally it's, not Superman. No, no. It's it's Captain Blandville. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, poor Herb. Oh, wow. It seems that, okay, Captain Marvel the movie was not bad. It was entertaining. Somehow, people don't really like the actress playing her. I don't understand why. I don't mind her. I mind that she's pretty much defined solely by her power. Everyone's like, oh, look at her. She can do this and she can do that. Oh, and she doesn't flinch when Stormbringer flies by her head. We know very little about her as a person other than what people tell us. But we did like see that, her growth in the um, what, Captain Marvel in her own movie. I wouldn't call that growth. I'd call that being told that she's a strong person, and that's it. 
how different is she from the start of the movie versus the end of the movie? In truth, I think it's mostly just she changed sides. She didn't change herself. Eh, probably, I, I guess. No, that yeah, too. Captain Marvel does take place True. before, like, say, yeah. Iron Man. I mean, even though the movie came a, out like this year, talk about time travel confusion. Oh, yeah. But oh, you think this is confusing yeah. <laughs> Thanos? Wait, that's how they should defeat Thanos. They just put, lay out the entire Marvel Cinematic timeline in front of him, and his head explodes. No, it's no. too much. I can't take it all in. No, man. Like they should have another Infinity Gauntlet just by the side, and like, um, like Bill and Ted, like says like, okay, um, at this point in time. There's another infinity going to my side. How is it there? Because somebody put it there. Bill and Ted, yo. We set up the cage and we set up the gun. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, we, we get to see this cool moment where Spidey's flying on a Pegasus and suddenly falls down. And who's there to help him? Captain Marvel. And oh my goodness. The fan art I've seen of this is just so, uh, like little uh, kid spider uh, Peter there with some badass ladies around him. Ara ara. So let's see. I gotta see the Spider Man, Captain Marvel. Checking Deviant Art. Oh well, mostly it's just the characters. Yeah, I'm not seeing the artwork just yet. Yeah, but here's the thing. Um. Uh, I will say of the, of the awesome scenes, this one feels maybe just a, li- a too little too manufactured. Yeah, see, here's, here's the thing I was going to bring up because um, when I saw this scene, I scoffed at it because oh, this is Marvel's idea of doing girl power thing, uh, similar to what DC did with Wonder Woman. So I, I felt like it was forced rather than uh, natural. Yeah, you're doing it because it's an all-girl team, not because it's what the scene calls for. Yep. And most of the girls there don't really know each other. Nope. Although, I gotta I gotta wonder about Mantis. She's never struck me as a hands-on combatant. She helps people fall asleep. Though, given her later enthusiasm for a knife fight, that could be changing. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, too, uh, we get to see what um, we, we get to see. You know, it's not a badass move, like, but they don't really know each other. That's the problem there. Well, now they'll get to know it. Maybe, maybe this is the Marvel version of you know, girls' night out. Let's get, let's go kill a bunch of henchmen. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, hey, we'll make this even more actiony and uh, have all the girls uh, Avengers assemble. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. And the one being that's more OP than Captain Marvel is Thanos. And even he has to pluck an Infinity Stone to manage to knock her away. Which is awesome, but I'm also like, man, it's like, that's all she is. She's the powerhouse. Yeah, but if you really and, think about it, uh, even some somebody more, even more powerful is Scarlet Witch. Theoretical. Yeah, did, did you see how she handled... Or Thanos, like he's been beating him up like pulp. Well, she, she she was crushing him in rocks. I mean, of course, she has every reason to be angry. His machinations, it's not just a vision, it was also her brother. But that's the thing. Wanda is a character. She has her vulnerabilities. We've we've gotten to see her just be herself, uh, grow more. Which she hasn't had a lot of screen time. I don't feel like she's gotten as much attention as uh, she deserves. But she's more a character than Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah. True that. But still, man. Um, what else? <coughs> I mean, when Thanos says, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> oh, you'll know. Oh, it's like, it's like, oh, Thanos, you done stepped in it now. Oh, snap, snap, snaps. And by the way, check out that uh, picture I just uh, linked in the... Chat thing. <laughs> oh wow! Ara, ara. <laughs> but still, uh, let's see. Um, anything else? Anything else? Um, yeah, the, the fight scene. Um, Captain Marvel gets beat up. Tony comes in, uh, s- trying to wrestle away the gauntlet from Thanos, and Thanos just 
beats him away like a bug and snaps his fingers, but nothing happens. Actually, this is funny. When I when I saw this with my dad, mm-hmm. he, he even muttered, oh, they're gone. <laughs> right, right, right as Thanos turned away, it was like, yep, yes, dad, they're gone. Now, don't, don't say that during the movie. Well, I gotta say something now. During when I was in, watching this in the theaters, when Thanos got the gauntlet, everyone was literally shouting, "No, not Although, again!" We we both shared our experiences with watching this movie. Tortera, where, what? Where were you? What theater? What was the crowd like? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so my my crowd, they were uh, they were like happy, but they were also kind of quiet a few moments. Like when well when the Avengers came in with the. Um, like, you know, going through all the portals. Everyone was cheering and clapping. Some people sharing, yeah! And then the the part I just mentioned where Thanos grabbed the gauntlet, some people were like, no! And I was like, not again! I was like, I'm like, oh my god. They spent three hours in that theater, so they are going mm-hmm. to be invested. How about you, Silva? What was your audience like? Oh, they were... Well, it was the Alamo, so they were mostly quiet. Uh, huh. I, I was telling Norman earlier that I was sitting next to a person with a, a verbal tick. Who so was making sounds throughout the entire movie, uh, that that affected my enjoyment. I'm afraid. Uh. At the same time, I felt bad because this wasn't something the person could help. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not something you could just will to stop. True that. True. Yeah. Uh, but it was still a wonderful time, and everybody was getting swept up in the Avengers pouring into this fight. But then the, you get to the scene of you know, I am inevitable, and I. Am Iron Man? Oh, and oh, that part. Yeah, that part. And the, the, the way he just says, "I am Iron Man," like, ah, call back, call back to the first Iron Man movie. Ah! We all got our fanboys out. <laughs> oh man, that was so good. <laughs> but then getting to see Thanos, where he just sort of sits down and <coughs> ponders his end. It's like, you know, in hindsight. I'm a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Like, I just think... <laughs> See, uh, movie Thanos was not... Sorry, movie Thanos is not as great as comic book Thanos. Really? I think he's better than comic Thanos. No. He doesn't have a helicopter with his name on it, for starters. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, let's try to explain that one. <laughs> I can do good. You know what? No, I got no idea. Maybe Linkara would know. <laughs> no, but the thing is, okay. Um, this this year, the, the um, the Infinity War in the comic books was the start of the Symbiote Saga too, where Spider got his uh black uh spider suit. The, if I do remember right, um, Thanos managed to sorry, I think Ma- Thanos isolated himself to become a farmer and. When the uh, Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity Stones were assembled again, uh, the heroes had to ask him for help because he's the only leading expert for it. And he helped them. He he was a noble guy and he helped them. I think Linkara talked about it more than what I can do. Like, yeah, go watch The Top of the Fourth Wall and search for that. It's really a good read or a good watch. But this Thanos is... Well, okay... That Thanos in the comics was trying to woo death yeah. it's, itself, as symbolized by a woman. I find this Thanos, even though his morality and logic are twisted, he's still doing this for mm, good reasons, I think. Well, no, no, not, not good reasons. You understand his reasoning. You understand why, even if it's twisted, why it makes a certain kind of sense. And it's only when you really dig deep you fi- you start to find... The contradictions, the hypocrisies, the limitations. You could do a whole. We could do a whole talk about just why this does or does not work. True that. True that. And here's the thing. Um, in a good written story, the characters don't see themselves as evil. They see themselves as the hero of their own story. In Thanos's case, he views himself as the hero because. I am just doing what's right. I'm just putting balance in the world. Don't blame me. I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, yes, with with the snap from Tony, um, Thanos' forces dies off or vanish off. 
funny enough, Gamora is not one of them. But she is missing. And, okay, I feel bad for Peter Quill, Star-Lord. Yeah. He, uh, he gets to see her, and the first thing she does is knee him in the jump. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> but that one missed, so she got both on the second try. Oh, yeah. And um, her word to Nebula was, I fall in love with him? And Nebula just says, it's either him or the tree. <laughs> Apparently, Drax is off the off limits. Yeah, and I don't think Nebula's yep. a furry. Sorry, I don't think um, Gamora's a furry. Probably not. Yeah. So any, but it, it, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I mean, but the, I guess we we're at the funeral part now. Yeah, we're just jumping ahead. And it's so sad. I know. And by the way, did you notice the kid from Iron Man Three? Was he? Yes. Oh, was he in the? Was he at the funeral? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. Somebody had to tell me. <laughs> because I knew that. <laughs> because we're connected. I try not. To, I try not to remember Iron Man three. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! You didn't like Iron Man three? I think it was the weakest of the Iron Man movies. I agree with that. If you're talking about if it's mm-hmm. bad, it has some value in it, but yeah. Well, every hero has a blemish. I mean, Thor has the Dark World. Iron Man has Iron Man 3. Hulk has everything. <laughs> you. Yeah. Only Captain America, I think, really came through in each one. True. Captain America has the best. Call it fanboying, but I think Captain America has the strongest set of independent movies. Yeah. Mostly because they're not really independent. <laughs> Because he's got America's... Yes. Uh, I'm not going to say that word. Oh. Or am I allowed yes. to? Yes, yes. It's not... It's not. Oh, okay. It's not for a letter, so Sweetie Bot will not be invoked. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, because he's got Captain, he's got America's yeah. ass. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see Scott Lang is just a fanboy. <laughs> oh boy. But anyway, um, getting back on track. Yes. So funeral. Um, we get to see everyone's there, and we get to see Samuel L. Jackson. What's his name? Nick Fury. Nick Fury. Nick Fury. Yeah, we get to see Nick Fury there too. And, oh man, like, this the scene with Happy and uh, Morgan? Yep. Yeah, like, oh, that was sweet. By the way, Morgan in the comics is Tony's cousin. Ah. Is she the... I know there's a new young woman who's wearing an Iron Man suit in the comics. Is uh, she... No, from what I remember, uh, the cousin is a bratty character like eh, not not really good character um the iron maiden or whatever it's called i'm not 100 sure because in uh marvel in comics right um in the cartoon world marvel's rise or something like that there is an iron heart and she created her own armor something like that she's almost a genius like um tony oh Either way, that's a topic for another day. Yeah. We've been at this for an hour and a half. I know. So anywho, um, Happy says, uh, um, she she just he just tried to make Morgan happy and stuff, and yeah, everybody is kind of saying their goodbyes. And at the end, we see uh, Sam, Bucky, Hulk, and Captain America gathered at the time machine, and. He is tasked with the job of sending the Infinity Stones back to the point of origins. And if we don't show it, we don't have to explain the multitude of paradoxes we've created. Oh, yeah. Good times. Yep, yep. Good times. I have several questions, though. Go ahead. <laughs> See if we can answer them. Well, well, one being, if Cap was to return the Soul Stone, then wouldn't Black Widow no. come back? Damn. It can't be undone. Yep. But at the same time... It's so sad. But at the same time, too, with that happening, right... With, um, I, I told this joke earlier, but Captain America giving back the Soul Stone, he meets Red Skull. Like, what? <laughs> ah, guten Tag, Captain. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, every, everything's set in stone. Hulk tries to bring him back, but, oh no, uh, what's happening? Uh, you can see, you can clearly see Bucky's being angry at um, Hulk for this malfunction and Sam just points to the chair and says hey um, who's uh, that I think I uh, think you, you got it backwards it's uh, oh, the other way around right, right. Norman so yeah well, the other way around yeah so so Bucky he, he hey he's been through war and even 
more. I guess that's why he's so composed. But 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 you talk, you're talking about Bucky, right? Uh, remember the conversation that Bucky and Steve have before he left. Which one? They've had lot. They've had several no, goodbye for, talks. For for the I think he's talking about the one yeah. at the end game where Cap's like, uh, "Don't be stupid," yeah. and Bucky's like, "How can I when I I'm bringing the stupid with you?" Yeah, 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 like yeah, that. yeah. That is a callback so for uh, Captain America: the First Avengers, where um, Cap was saying that to Bucky. Now it's reverse. Well, there's a <clears> lot of <throat> reversal because when when Sam takes up the shield, uh, I love that. At the start of the movie, Captain America was filling in for him on the support groups. Now he'll fill in for Cap as the leader hero, and he'll be America's ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but this... you gotta you gotta work that booty. <laughs> yeah. Booty, 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 rocking around my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, but still, that was awesome. Like um, the the way that uh, Sam picked up the shield and he looked at Bucky. And Bucky says, doesn't say yes, you just give him the head nod and says, pick it up and stuff. Like, yeah, go ahead, become the new Captain America. And then the whole world was in awe and cheering. Yep, yep. Oh, man. There's so much. That was so awesome. Like, just so awesome. Here's a question going forward, though. Did Marvel do too good a job with this movie? What do you mean? Well, okay. Have you guys seen the most recent trailer for Spider-Man? Uh, yes. Yeah. And technically, this is not... It's uh, Marvel's fault because trailer distribution is done by Sony. Well, either... It's not the distribution, though. It's the writing Oh, I'm talking about. I'm going to say that Spider-Man Far From Home, the way they presented it, it's more of a resolution, a denouement, uh, because it's dealing with the loss of Tony. Maybe it'll open the door to new stories, but a very big part of it is dealing with what's happened. Where do you go from here? You've had this 10-year epic of all these various stories converging, all these characters you just fell in love with. Is anything going to match this arc? Personally, for me, it all depends on how you tell the story going forward. Yes, um, all of the core Avenger groups are retired. Now, with uh, Marvel uh, getting the right back to most of its characters... We can do other stories. So now, just imagine this. Um, you'll have Spider-Man as an Avenger. Technically, he is now. Um, Tony um, knighted him as one. <coughs> then you might get Wolverine as an Avenger. And so on. Wait, Swan? Wolverine. Who's, no, and, Swan. and so Who's on. Swan? I know, I'm just giving you a hard test. Uh, <clears throat> but still... Um, the whole Avenger idea, like when it first came out, um, and I was playing a lot of Marvel um, Ultimate Alliance or Ultimate something. You remember that Xbox PS3 game? Yeah, yeah, I remember it. A really fun game. Like that gave me a general idea of what's going to happen and stuff, and who's the who are the Avengers? Because back then, to me, Avengers were Iron Man, Captain America, Spider Man, Wolverine, and also Thor. Those were my Avengers back in the days. I guess the only of the of the original set of Avengers, only Hulk might still be active. Nah, man. Like, um, there's there was an interview oh, well. with the Russo brothers where they say that his right arm totally dead. Oh, yep. Oh, okay. Well, then Thor, right? The Asgardians of the galaxy. I like that. <laughs> the Asgardian I, I, I of watched. the galaxy. Yep. I want to see that movie. Oh yeah, he's going to be there, man. Like, um, Thor is off world. Like, I, I, oh man, you know what? I'm not going to talk about the Far From Home trailer because it's considered spoiler by now because of yeah, you know what? Yeah, spoilers now. So, anywho, um, are we going to finish? Like, is it done? <laughs> I I feel like we've uh, said all we can. Yep. Well, we missed oh, one little it? thing. Okay. Well, after Cap was done giving Sam the shield, we cut to a scene with Cap dancing with his wife. I forget her name, though. Peggy. That's it. He's dancing with Peggy, and then that's where it ends. And it was sweet that he finally got what he wanted. And technically, that is a whole nother headache to itself. Because you remember uh, in uh, Winter Soldier, there's this, um, I won't say spy, but um, shield agent that was meant to protect 
I thought that was the, I thought that was the Black Widow. No, 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 no. Um, it was Peggy's daughter or granddaughter. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, um, Cap just created a time paradox. Or she, or he just pulled a Game of Thrones and made out with his future but not yet daughter. Oh God. Yeah, familiar relations are in time travel. Don't pull a Futurama and become your own grandfather. Oh, God, no. Oh, or how about Red Dwarf? I'm my own father. <laughs> and Kachansky, my ex-girlfriend, is my mom. <laughs> what? So anyway, um... <laughs> yes, I just, bro- I just broke Norman. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, He's nice. With that done, um, movies in finish. No, there's no end credit for this one. If you stay till the end, you might have heard um, some riggings. Uh, that is a what you might call this homage to uh, the first Iron Man movie, where Iron Man was hitting steel to anvil to create the first Iron Man armor. Ah, <clears throat> well, I all I know is that the the staff at both theaters I saw this. We're very helpful. They they would call it to people. There's no end credits. If you need to use the bathroom, yeah. you, you won't miss anything. <laughs> it's like thank you. <laughs> My movie theater didn't runs. do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I we, uh, most of us stayed near till the end, and Mar- Marvel has trained us well. <laughs> so yeah, movie movie ends. Okay, um, clearly that we all enjoyed this. But final thoughts, Silva. I love this movie. Uh, I had a grand time. I would gladly watch it a third, maybe even fourth, but I'll definitely be getting it on Blu-ray as soon as it comes out. Are you talking about <laughs> the 22 set Blu-ray? Is it like all the Marvel movies in one? Yes. Set? Yes. I don't need that. I've been collecting them very faithfully. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'll just be collecting the one, and I love it. Uh, and I, I am curious but a little cautious about how they'll go forward from here. True, true. Yeah, well... We'll have to see. We'll have to see because um, Spider-Man: Far From Home is still considered to be in the Phase Four. Yeah. So anyway, Tara, what about you? Oh, I love this movie. Like I, I just got like oh, it was so good from the beginning to the end. I loved it. It brought back some memories of when they were showing off the first Avengers. Uh, made me happy. Made me sad. Build me in suspense. Like there were times where I was holding onto my sweater and I had it up in my mouth, I'm like, "Oh, what's gonna happen next?" I was so into the movie. Like, it was an emotional roller coaster, and ju- I'd also get the DVD, not the full collection, because I also have been getting the DVDs <laughs> of the past movies. But <laughs> I, I'm also kind of curious of what they're gonna do in the future with Spider-Man: Ho- uh, Far From Home and Guardians of the Galaxy Three, and I think they said there's also gonna be a Doctor Strange too. There, there's a whole bunch of other movies. Like, there's going to be a Black Panther two. There's going to be, um, who now? Sam and Bucky uh, TV series. There's going to be a Black Widow movie. There's going to be uh, what you might call this Loki move. No, no Loki TV series. So yeah, there is a lot of paradoxes going on here. Ah uh, yes, especially now with uh, Disney Plus coming soon, a lot of stuff are going to be on there. Yep, yep, yep. To me, I feel like them doing the Disney Plus thing is a good and a bad thing because what are they planning? Because they say that there's going to be a Falcon and Winter Soldier movie or series. It could be a buddy cop movie or something like that, so that'll be fun, I guess. But still, what the heck? But anyway, um, as for me, I feel that this movie was pretty awesome. Like, sorry, I take that back. I This movie was awesome. It was the best um, this is what DC wants. This this is what DC dreams of happening, but <laughs> uh, DC don't want to wait that long. DC wants money now. <laughs> the way that they told the story was awesome. Starting out with Iron Man, who nobody really knows or cares, because back in two thousand and eight, when we say, oh, would you want to see an Iron Man movie? Would you say yes? I would be curious. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Back in the day, who knows Iron Man, right? He's that drunk alcoholic person of a person. And they hired Robert Downey Jr. of all people. Is he good? 
And well, we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> and them taking the risk. Look at where it is now. Damn. When we get back, when we go back to the future now, we see that Marvel was a genius in storytelling. But I do have to put this out there. Because of this, superhero stories are kind of abundance and it gets tiring. Well, I'm not totally burnt out on them yet. I'd like to see what else is in store. And when I am, I'll I'll just let the let it go. Mm-hmm. I don't mind superhero movies. I mean, it's a fun watch, but you have to think about it in the sense where there's too much of it, and some of them are going to be good, some of them are going to be bad. Well, as for me, I may be done with the Marvel uni- cinematic universe, but now it's on to the giant monster universe with first Kong, and then now Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's 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 gonna be awesome because the trailer itself was awesome. Yes, very awesome. <laughs> oh, talking about big giant monsters, did you see the Pokemon movie yet? No, I want to. <laughs> I'm going to see. It. I plan on seeing it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to see yourself there, man. Yeah, I'm famous. <laughs> yeah, you are. So anyway, um, <coughs> let's call it an end. Uh, we all like it. We all say it's. Awesome, go watch it. If you haven't watched it, go go watch all 22 movies. Yay. <laughs> well, you could say that this is the end game of the review. Oh, yeah. But anyway. <laughs> so anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's show? Well, now that we've talked about an end game, I think we should talk about the beginning of the end. Oh, no. <laughs> the start of the final season of My Little Pony. Ah, yes. So next week, we will be reviewing the first two episodes for... Season 9. Uh, <laughs> what was it called again? The Beginning of the End. The Beginning of the End, yes. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Are you talking about the Sonic movie? No, don't mention that. <laughs> that seems like the beginning to an end. Uh, no, that was that was over before it began. <laughs> yes, so anyway, uh, next week we will be reviewing Season 9, Episode 1 and 2, uh, Beginning of the End, Episode 1 and 2. So anyway, if you have any questions for us or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at imagergmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sun, so I'm dying. <coughs> Sorry. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. And you can find me on Equestria Daily every week with uh, either comic <laughs> review or editorial on Wednesday. And, of course, hop on YouTube and do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, and you shall find my channel. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, they can easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch the radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PolitiverLife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you'll get a weekly access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You have been awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Zisir Vakril. I am Torterra1324. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Brownies assemble. <laughs> Yay! That, that should be the cry for BronyCon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that should be actually, since it's BronyCon the last year. Oh, so, someone's got to do it. Do it, Silva. Do it. Brownies assemble. Yeah. <laughs>